What's going on, everyone? This is Michael Stewart Isaacs. And this is Shemekka Ebony. And this is your next edition of Sunday Sunday Stacks. Sunday Stacks. We are back and we love it. This is another week for us to stack it all up and get all of our house together and really prepare for a new week. And our theory of Sunday Stacks is that every time you come back week for week, you should be stacking up your life. You should be seeing how everything adds up, how these insights are allowing for you to continue to empower yourself so you improve. And that's what we're all about is constant improvement. So we thank you always for joining us with this experience. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. And we are nearing our 30th episode since we relaunched. Let's so we're go. super excited. If this is your first time, welcome to the space and make sure you feel free to catch up whenever you get a moment and listen to all 29 episodes of bringing you fire, heat, centering family, community, and company. You better tell them this. We love what we do here. And Sunday Stacks is an experience brought to you by I Am Brilliant. I Am Brilliant is the walk of fame of movements, yes. meaning I Am Brilliant has been able to have such collaboration. Collaborations. We are a simple tool that is meant to help empower Ooh. communities and illuminate everyone to believe that we are the leaders that we are looking for. And we thank all the celebrities, all the community leaders, all the families that have participated yes. in the campaign Every over the last... People. I mean, it has been an eight-year journey of building I Am Brilliant, um, going on nine years, been ready for 10 years. I mean, we've been just on the path, just seeing so many illuminaries, people who we call our alumni, come through this just by a simple photo, watching those start points and seeing where people have grown to just by the the easy self-confidence. We're just grateful for what we've been able to craft with I Am Brilliant and Sunday Stacks is the birthplace of this foundation. So we're always excited to share that story with you all because we need to explain why Sunday Stacks is important, but most importantly, we need to explain to you why you're brilliant and why you need to continue to feed yourself to continue to keep your light shining as bright as possible. Yes, I love that. Love it. So as we look to give an opportunity to pay some bills, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors. For me, I like to shout out QuickBooks for sponsoring us. Intuit QuickBooks is a tool to help you establish yourself as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, where you keep everything in order. It just makes it a little easier for your bookkeepers and your accountants to have standard practices that will help you stay organized. Something even myself, I always have to get on top of my accountability to stay organized. We all need the things like QuickBooks to help us keep ourselves growing and make sure that we reconcile all of what we're building within our businesses. So give a quick shout out to QuickBooks. You'll find a link in the description. So definitely click on it. Check it out. We'll offer you a special discount. Yes, here with this show. Yes, yes connect it to my platform, Entrepreganda. So we definitely love feeding our community and making sure entrepreneurship is celebrated, talked about, as well as giving the right guidance and perspective so you can stay encouraged. I love it. I want to make sure to lift up these opportunities, y'all. First of all, this first quarter is wrapping really soon. And some of us may be in a frenzy state and not knowing what's next, have not gotten your plan and strategy together uh, to the point of accountability and um implementation. We are here to support you. Shout out to Forum for creating a peer support group virtual platform for us to be able to get together. It is not too late to sign up for the Leadership Empowerment Group that will be meeting frequently to build your capacity as leaders, business leaders, organizational leaders, and family leaders that are looking to lead her ship into a stronger, more sustainable, uh, I, I would say, opportunity that helps you be self-full and feel selfish in building up not only your capacity to grow, but also building those around you. So shout out to Forum for creating that space. The links will be in the description. Please go ahead and sign up. We'll be happy to meet you where you are to take you where you want to be. I love it. And thank you again for everything that you do, the listeners. Thank you for taking these suggestions. We want to give you things that are going to only create empowerment for your spirit, empowerment for your soul so you can really grow. Because I know none of us out here want to just be average. Shemeka, does anyone want to be average out here? No. None of us want to be Be allergic to average as my great partner on a panel at Bayer lifted up. 
Uh, she said she is allergic to average. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. And I think, you know, these opportunities that we continue to seek as a community, what we continue to grow into, it's really about nurturing and making sure that we have a standard foundation. So as Shemekka spoke of earlier, we focus here at Sunday Stacks on our FCC model, which is family, community, and company. And with us understanding the realities of what's going on in the world with so much plight here in our own country, here in the United States, state to state across the globe, but where our own local backyards are. We really have to start to create a foundation that really starts to be the change agent to combat so much things out there. And one of the things we want to be an uh, agent of change for is the comfort levels, the conversations around the topic of Divorce. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Sunday Stacks, once again, is rekindling our divorce talks. And yeah. divorce talks is a segment that we always bring every now and then through our platform. As you go back and listen to those past episodes, you'll hear us mention divorce talk. Divorce talks goals is for us to unpack the the things that have been made uncomfortable for our society yeah. when it comes to the choice that two people come that they can't build together no longer or the choice people make within marriage to decide they want to come together and how to make that more lasting. And uh, me and Shemekka, were very transparent. We're a second chance couple. That means we both have been previously married. But for whatever reason and some reasons that we will always unpack transparently to you, the audience, we it didn't work out. But when we found each other and we found our evenly yokeness, we met a community. The rest is a love story, and it allows for us to continue to be empowered by one another. But we, too, have our struggles. We, too, have to adjust and bring our relationship together. So uh, we pose a unique question. I don't bring this to you, Shemekka. This conversation is about a divorce prevention framework. And I want you to teach that master class that I know you can teach us. But what I'm going to give you is a premise. Is a good marriage... And spousalship, should it be a curated relationship by both parties? And what I mean by that is, should it be something where the core value of the relationship isn't I grew up with the person? You know, some people, most people would date somebody, met them and date for two, three years and say, this is the one for me. But are we saying that in a forever standpoint because we understand that that other person can curate life experiences that you yourself by yourself wouldn't necessarily seek out. And that's something me and Shemekka have learned in our relationship is that we have a beauty of curating things for one another. But I want to ask you that question. Is that a valid point? Is a marriage, a good marriage and a good spouseship, should it be a thing where both parties are curating the relationship for one another? What are your thoughts? Um, I think that's a, a good benefit uh, to be able to operate in a way that you're intentional and in curating experiences for one another. I think it has to be a foundation of examining expectations along the way and checking in. I think communication is important, especially when you think about a divorce prevention framework. <laughs> like every one of us that gets married think we're getting married for forever. And uh, for whatever reasons, we found ourselves, you know, meeting representatives that didn't follow through. It was the lack of communication that gave space for us to curate life together, to be in agreement and alignment, you know, with what our future will look like together. Uh, some of us are thrust into that very quickly without planning and prep. And then those that have waited all their lives and did all the planning and prep could not have planned or prep with the person that they're going that they ended up with. Uh, because people are getting to know themselves just as much as they're getting to know you. So having that core of uh, curating the intentions of transparency and authenticity are just as important as creating experiences because we know how to look good on the outside, uh, knowing that our kitchen needs cleaning and support. Uh, some of it looks like uh, uh, you need a hazmat <laughs> <laughs> in your kitchen. And we're here to do that. We're here to raise this awareness to take off the taboo because it's killing us in secret. It's killing us softly. It's destroying our families. And if we don't take a stance at talking about how to prevent it or giving you some space to talk through it, we'll keep perpetuating this in cycles that go uh, beyond us and uh, limit our capacity to be those representations of family, community, and company in, in a positive example of what's next. 
I love it. And I think the way we break down some of the notion of curation, let's give our own examples, right? So in our relationship, I love to cook. And so I take priority and lead. We don't leave it to a standardized role like, oh, the woman's Mm -hmm. supposed to be the cook and the man. No, I enjoy cooking. And, you know, for me, I realized recently, like my family are cultured, meaning that I'm a first generation born in America with a father who's from Jamaica and a mother that's from Sierra Leone, West Africa. And I sometimes find my culture in my cooking. And I'm able to share that with Shemeca, which then gives her a oh, embrace. Yeah, you know, <laughs> he's an answer prayer for me. So I just want to be t- show you how selfish I am with my relationship with God. <laughs> it's because I that's an answered prayer that he loves. He came here loving to cook, and I am going to create that atmosphere and opportunity for him to be his best full self and not limit him by putting a stereotype gender expectation on it um, just based on what we experience growing up or in society. I appreciate the culture and essence and spice he brings into however he curates it. And I get to <laughs> cook American food and, and he get to taste that. Um. And, and we balance it. And when she means American food, of course, we know black soul food. You know, I get all that soul food and fried chicken and things that, you know, is a, is a delicacy for me. You know, when I eat American soul food, it's like me when people eat Jamaican food or any other food. I get that same stimulus. Oh, should I get some of this southern food? And then some people, when they eat Jamaican food, the jerk chickens, the curries, you know, they get that kind of feeling. So, Food is a joyful thing that we've curated for each other to share culture, to share our love, um, to share our appreciation for one another, that consideration to make sure the food is there to also give us strength and health. So, again, also what I look at what Shemeca does for me is when I'm like lazy, let's call it what it is, to want to go out here and find events or places to take our kids and stuff. She finds those things and she curates it not just for me, but for our family. And I may not be my it may not be my first thought to do those things. But when I do do it with her, I bring my full self and I find enjoyment from it. And I'm able to do something that I wouldn't have done for myself because she curated a phenomenal experience. And y'all, she knows how to pick the best hotel. So <laughs> let me tell you, and we do got some award memberships. So any hotels listening, you know, we definitely need that sponsorship. We will definitely come talk with us. But I mean, seriously, she picks the best hotels, the best stays, the best locations for what's around for us to have food that we can eat out. So, I mean, she just creates such a phenomenal curated experience. Every time we travel, we tour. We, of course, have the I Am Brilliant tour and we work as speakers. We work as uh, presenters. Uh, You know, we speak in so many different spaces. So we bring our full tour. I bring the cameras out. You know, we take the photos and we're able to continue this movement to create empowerment. So any of y'all look out for us if we are in a city near you uh, we are you know always excited to bring that iron brilliant tour and, and it'll come bring through with the shemeca mobile we'll come through the shemeca mobile yeah if y'all don't know what the shemeca mobile is definitely go check our social media platforms out and see what we're doing and understand part of why we're talking about divorce talk is because me and shemeca are constantly figuring out what we need to do to keep our relationship strong yes. so we never have that as the option we want to make that not even Take on the table the table, like. But we address it. We talk to that fear of it, not only in our relationship, but what we've observed other people go yes. through. And we bring this thing full circle. But that's why you have to have a framework. And that's what Sunday Stacks is here to do. That's what the I Am Brilliant Tour is here to do. The framework of family, community, company is helping us have the simple uh, pendulums of where I won't let my guardrails go away. So that way I can stay focused Focus, on, on right. God. Like for those faithful people, God is not a person, a man, you know, in heaven, though we say him and he and all those things. God is an essence of feeling. It's the holiness of spirit is that thing that keeps us alive and has our breath. And with that, we always appreciate that understanding and that growth. And that's part of what we need to do to prevent divorce is sometimes just simply breathe. Have a moment, give each other space, meditate, find ways to reframe and be willing to listen to someone else's perspective because they don't have your life experience when we bring us one, you know, bring man and wife together. You're bringing two different life experiences together. You have to be open for that situation to Mm -hmm. maturate. And then you also have to co-curate experiences for your children. 
And if you have, like us, bonus children that we have our brilliant bunch, that mixed up bag, just like the Brady Bunch TV show from back in the days with <laughs> right. a brilliant bunch, um, you know, hers, mine's and ours. Right. So as a family unit, we have to be, you know, very delicate, but we still have to parent and we still have to curate and co-create experiences for our family and for our unit. And trust me, my kids love my food just as much as my wife loved that, you know, how I mix that spoon. So, you know, we definitely, you know, we make sure it's balanced and we, we learn from our children every day. Even our youngest ones are teaching us new things. So again, life is about this curation. And if you can understand that when you bring people in your life, it's meant to be curated experiences that you're allowing for your life to absorb. Then we can find a greater thrill in all of what we're out here trying to do as a human people. I love it. Thank you for lifting that up. And I appreciate the intentionality that we've been able to grow in the almost 10 years that we've been walking together on this long walk. And our openness to and willingness to grow and expand has helped us uh, with what I like to call being unbreakable. We're moldable. We've been flexible. And it's taken the heartache and pain of when potential brokenness or broken opportunities or things, arrows and darts sent to break, we've been able to expand and and strengthen with a, a unified front in a way that's, I guess, reflecting to so many other people what's possible. Um, yeah. We can't do that without open communication and transparency. So I thank you for uh, being that and breaking stereotypes, even as a black man, um, about uh, the stereotypes that, you know, put an impression on how you all see relationship. And I appreciate your openness to co-design our coexistence together for this long walk. We're going to change culture, y'all. We out here changing culture. Y'all may not know us today. But as these future episodes get heard and as we share our message, we're not going to hold our music back. We're not going to stop these messages we're sharing with you all. But this is our time now in our show. As much as we love to continue to talk about Divorce Talk, you continue to follow us as the I Am Brilliant Tour comes. We'll have some Divorce Talk features within our tour to a city near you. So check out all our platforms for those updates. Yes. Um, you can learn more at ShemekaEbony.com and IamBrilliant.com uh, .org, and also find us on all major social media platforms for announcements. So please definitely understand this is our favorite point of the show this is something we call the whiz of the week the whiz of the week the whiz of the week yes 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 it is the master sorcerer it is the master paying attention to all the disasters that are out there but we are really going to bring you all the fun with the whiz of the week because uh, we need a little bit of uh, a little bit of speak a little bit of conversation but what we don't do here at sunday stacks is gossip much but we do highlight important things we feel that the week has brought to us that has had our attention. And so we can't overlook those storylines. So first of all, we're going to start off with TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Yep. Yes, TikTok. Yes, the, yes, the platform that has had everyone's imagination over the last few years. I mean, we had Twitter that is now X. We've had Facebook. Facebook. Oh, they call themselves Meta and they've absorbed Instagram. They got WhatsApp. They have so many things. We had Snapchat. We've had so many different variations of social media over the years. And then all of a sudden, this magical thing called TikTok came to the world, even though it was a variation of Vine and Musical.ly and all these other platforms for those texts like myself that know the history of these things. But TikTok now in its form and its power that it has taken over the American imagination is now looking to be banned. Yes, banned, you all. Banned by the House. The House has passed a bill that is called literally the TikTok ban bill, and they're trying to get it across in a way that TikTok is something that a foreign power is getting information from our youth and from our kids, and they're putting out content that is creating mass distraction and disruption within our democracy, and they do not want that to happen. So, you know, it's it's a crazy situation. Any thoughts on this TikTok ban, Shemek, and how this might impact those TikTok users out there that are finding sponsorship opportunities as well as just feeling recognized and seen? 
Yes, I am a TikTok user for promotion of my branded materials and products. And I think about it through the lens as having a TikTok shop. So being an entrepreneur, uh, potentially being impacted. Now, my numbers are incredible, y'all. Y'all should go check them out. And make sure you press like and subscribe while you're there. <laughs> she met go on TikTok if you didn't catch that. Yeah. Uh, but my TikTok shop is there. And I think about uh, also the barriers of the conversation that are not happening and that we don't get any of the information of people that buy things from TikTok shop. Like we don't get names and addresses. We get money uh, on the return. Uh, but yeah, they're holding our information on who's actually uh, buying products. So we don't get our client information. So that is data that they are withholding from us that we don't have any power control utilizing their platform as an e-commerce. That's I mean, hey, entrepreneurship is the main thing right now, entrepreneur, right? I mean, it's the standard. So we understand that people are finding various platforms and social ways to connect to people that they would have never normally connected to. And TikTok has proven to be that. As we look to transition and we talk about bands, let's talk about who's resigning. Yes, we also have to pivot of the Wizard of the Week because if anyone's got a pulse out there that is paying attention to anything in the political world, especially that of what affecting the presidential race. We have down in the Atlanta area where we have going on in Fulton County where Nathan Wade has resigned. He is resigning from the election case that he was assigned by Fonnie Willis. And I say that right. I said it right. Right. I got it right. So we definitely, you know, it's a situation where, you know, I feel like this woman was trying to do the right thing and, you know, make a stance. And now they're finding all these ways to poke at the you know their case and what they're doing and try to discredit it but again i hope she stays firm i hope she stays strong her name will live on she is now not only <laughs> going to be known for the rest of history you know as the woman who tried to take down a, a former president but also you know with this this is going to be a part of it but nathan wade again I, I hope they had a game plan i hope whoever they transition that game plan to can still execute on what was done that was illegal and make sure that justice is served. Yes. But, you know, as we look at other aspects that happened in the Wiz of the Week, there was an amazing, uh, heartfelt moment on Good Morning America with Robin Roberts, where she had the opportunity to interview the great Regina yeah. King. Yes, yes. Two, two, seven fame. Yeah. Regina King, um, the crush of my youth. Uh, you know, somebody that, you know, everybody love Brenda. Don't start on front, you know, but definitely, you know, Regina King now has been a phenomenal actress for so many years, um, just defining the craft in so many ways so many things that she's done. I like to always mark that she did her real comeback act when she did the boondocks, where she didn't play just a, a female voice. She played the voice of the two young boys that were the lead characters <laughs> of that show and created so much uh, openness to this awakening or what people say woke in our community in regards to what the boondocks inspired. So she is just a phenomenal uh, talent and just a phenomenal yes. actress. And, uh, you know, and not only that, she also also does biopics and we know her from what she did with Ray with Jamie Foxx but so many films so many projects she's done over the years and this one is no sleeper this is the Ooh, one we need to all yes. rise up and see especially oh, in a political so year she is doing the film based on Shirley Chisholm's life oh yes the great Shirley Chisholm the the first African American woman to run for president and Regina King is portraying her life and she's done a phenomenal job in just sharing yes what her goals are with Unbought, the story. Unbossed. Yes, yes. And she is building greatly. She also had to disclose her feelings and what she has gone through with the loss of her son, who unfortunately lost his life due to suicide. So we definitely want to uplift her, uplift yeah. what her goals are as a storyteller mm -hmm. to continue to grow. We want to give her strength as a, a black, powerful woman on Women's History Month that yes. she's been a trailblazer in so and many I ways. celebrate her grief story and, and her truths that she shared because she helped give a reflection that grief can look like laughter and joy at times and tears at other times and that deeper connection opportunity. So I was so glad for her to bring her vulnerability to um, a platform as such uh, to also reflect that as we are doing good things, things that happen that impact us that may give us a new light and a deeper meaning as we saw with her story as well as she lifted she had been working on this project of 13 years with her sister 
um, and to bring it to manifestation. And she said 13 years ago, she doesn't believe she was ready, but it's her lived experiences. It's the things she's gone through that made her better prepared to produce. So think about that, the energy, the, the thoughts, the connections that when you watch this movie, you're looking at a curation of someone taking the time to develop, to bring forth such the, a, the awesome story of Shirley Chisholm. So thank you so much, Miss Regina King, for your work. Yes. So as we look to wrap, we always like to tell you again, we're going to put all the links in the bio. So please check them out for all our sponsors, for all our other projects with the I Am Brilliant Tour and the work we're doing across platforms such as Sunday Stacks and all the Shemekas platforms. Michael Stewart Isaacs, you can find so much. You know, I do my coach videos to keep you all motivated each day, every day on Instagram. Um, And we're building our YouTube channel. So click and like and subscribe to this channel here on Sunday Stacks. Like and subscribe our I Am Brilliant YouTube channel. Find links to all of our other personal YouTube channels and definitely get involved in the movement. If you like what you heard today, there's more good stuff out there. So we look forward to sharing it. We look forward to building with the community and just loving on you all. And just y'all just have a phenomenal uh, week and we look forward to coming back next week. So as we always say, I I am brilliant brilliant, and you are are too. too. Thank you again for listening to this edition of Sunday Stacks and we'll see you next week. Peace.